One of the most common questions that I get asked by players in Warpath is what is the best camp to use? And that's a pretty loaded question, so I figured I'd make a dedicated video to it so we can break it all down in depth. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back guys. Before we get the video kicked off, if you guys find value out of this video or any other video on the channel, make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel so you never miss any future uploads, and let's try to get this video to at least 150 likes. Let's go ahead and jump right in and start talking about the three camps. So we have three camps in Warpath. We have got the Martyr's Watch camp, we've got the Liberty camp, and we have got the Vanguard camp. And like I said, one of the most common questions I get from you guys is what is the best camp in Warpath? And that's a pretty loaded question. And the reason that's a loaded question is because there is not one clear cut answer. And all three of these camps offer some unique units that can play a role and that can be a big benefit to you depending on your play style. However, there is one camp in particular that has a little bit more versatility than any of the other camps and it also seems to do just a little bit better in most scenarios. And that is going to be the Liberty Camp. Now, I'm giving you guys the answer on the front end, but we are going to talk about this a whole lot more in depth as we go, and we're also gonna be talking about camp buffs and different things to take into consideration. Now, when we're talking about camps, all three of these camps have a lot of similarities in the units that they have. Now, each one of these camps also has a unique unit or two within them, but they also have a lot of units in common. So every single one of these three camps is going to have an infantry unit, a medium tank, a heavy tank, a tank hunter, a fighter plane, and a bomber. Now the unique unit completely unique to the Martyr's Watch camp is going to be the rocket launcher. The Martyr's Watch camp also has a howitzer, but so does the Liberty camp, and we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. Just like the Martyr's Watch camp, Camp Liberty has an infantry unit, a medium tank, a heavy tank, a tank hunter, a fighter plane, and a bomber, and it also has the howitzer like the Martyr's Watch camp. And the unique unit for the Liberty camp is going to be the light tank. Moving on to Vanguard, just like the Martyr's Watch camp and just like the Liberty camp, the Vanguard camp has an infantry unit, a medium tank, a heavy tank, a tank hunter, a fighter plane, and a bomber. But the Vanguard camp actually has two unique units, and that is going to be the super heavy, and the anti-tank gun. Now let's talk about the kind of overall theme of each one of these camps. So when I say theme, what their units are mainly focused and geared towards. So the Martyr's Watch camp in particular is going to be just kind of an umbrella overall view of it. It is going to be more of a defensive camp. So. For instance, the infantry unit is going to be more geared towards tanking and durability and survivability. Same thing with the medium tank. It's actually the only medium tank out of the three in the game that's got a self-healing capability, and it is very much geared towards durability and survivability. The Liberty camp is more of an offensive camp. You guys are going to get a lot of value out of this camp when you guys are doing offensive things with this camp in particular, with the units in this camp. You've got the light tank, for example, that's fantastic. It's super fast. It's the fastest and most agile and mobile unit in the game. You guys can get behind enemy lines. You guys can snipe reserves. You guys can get behind and choke off enemy army groups. You guys can do a lot of different things. The tank hunter from the Liberty camp is also the fastest tank hunter in the game out of the three. Same thing with the medium tank. The Liberty medium tank is not only the fastest medium tank out of all three medium tank options, it has also got the most firepower out of all three options. The Liberty heavy tank. The Liberty heavy tank does the most amount of structural damage when it's leading an attack against a base. The Liberty howitzer, definitely an offensive unit. It's got a lot of fortification damage, so you guys are generally going to find that the Liberty artillery units are going to be what you want in your Alliance's army groups when you guys are starting to attack bases. So from top to bottom, the Liberty camp is all around just a mainly offensive focused camp. Now the Vanguard camp is a more hybrid camp. It has got units that are both good in offensive and defensive situations. For example, the Vanguard infantry has got good defensive capabilities, 
but it also has the most amount of penetration damage out of any infantry unit in the game, so it does really well in the open field against enemy units. The Vanguard Medium Tank. This is another monster unit from the Vanguard camp. I've actually done testing videos on the medium tanks in general, so if you guys haven't seen that, especially if you're a new player, I would definitely suggest you guys go check that out. But the Vanguard Medium Tank is pound for pound the best medium tank in the game. It's got a good combination of firepower, speed, and durability. It's not the best at all, any of the three, but it is the overall most well-rounded unit out of all three options. The Vanguard Tank Hunter. Again, it's overall one of the better tank hunter options between the Vanguard and the Liberty Camp. They both offer a really unique skill set and a lot of value. So whichever direction you go, you can't really go a wrong direction. Then you've got the Vanguard Super Heavy Tank, which is a big, lucky, beefy unit. It's used for attacking bases. While it's not really necessarily, it's a defensive unit that plays an offensive role. And then you've got the Vanguard Super Heavy. The Vanguard Super Heavy is a tanking unit. It is a defensive unit that's used in an offensive role. It's big, it's slow, it's clunky, but it does do its job. It soaks up a lot of damage. The Vanguard Anti-Tank Gun is definitely a defensive focused unit. It is geared towards tank penetration, armor penetration. So it is going to be a more singular rolled unit, but it is very good at what it does. And it's one of the unique units in the Vanguard camp. So right away, you guys are probably noticing some kind of trend in what I'm saying. All three of these camps have a lot of similarities in units. They each have one or two unique units, but the camps are geared for really kind of different purposes. Again, you've got Martyr's Watch, more deep defensive liberty camp is more offensive and then vanguard is more of a hybrid so take your play style into consideration when you are deciding what units from what camps you want to make now overall and i've done again a ton of different testing videos so if you guys haven't checked those out i encourage you to go find those and to watch those because those will give you a lot of context to what i'm saying but overall Pound for pound, the Martyr's Watch camp is the single worst camp out of the three. Now, that doesn't mean that all of the units in the Martyr's Watch camp are bad. So, for example, when I did my, my uh, medium and main battle tank testing videos, I tested all three of the camps. I tested their medium tanks against each other. It was... A clear cut Martyr's Watch was the worst out of the three when engaging in combat with other medium and main battle tanks. Same thing with the Tank Hunter for Martyr's Watch Camp. I've done a Tank Hunter slash Helicopter uh, testing video. Martyr's Watch did the worst. It performed the worst out of the three camps. The Martyr's Watch, when you go, and I've done testing video side-by-side -side comparison videos with the Martyr's Watch Howitzer and the Liberty Howitzer. The Liberty is better. It just seems like everywhere you turn pound for pound, the Martyr's Watch Camp is the worst out of the three, but that doesn't again mean there's not some value here for example the martyr watch fighter it's not great but it does have a role that it plays and it does it well the martyr bomber is a very high-end unit it is one of the best units in the game especially specifically speaking to air force bombers specifically in my opinion it's probably the most well-rounded bomber there is the liberty is probably neck and neck with it but I'm a big fan of the Martyr Watch Bomber, for example. That's one unit that I would definitely suggest you consider making from the Martyr Watch camp if you do want a bomber. Now, here's what I want to do. We're going to jump over. We're going to talk about camp buffs, and then we're going to come back, and I am going to tell you guys what the overall best camp is. All right, so we know the Martyr Watch camp overall in just general speaking terms. There are some exceptions to the rule, but overall, we know the Martyr Watch camp is the worst out of the three. So that leaves us with the Liberty camp and the Vanguard camp. So which one out of these two is going to be the better option? Now, the answer to this is a little bit opinionated. There is not any concrete data to this. This is based on a combination of things that helped me draw my own conclusion. You guys might feel different, and if you do, that's okay. I would love to know what you guys think and why you think that in the comments. But in my opinion, the best overall camp in Warpath is going to be the Liberty Camp. Does it have the best units in every single category in the game? No, definitely not. Like I said, for example, the Vanguard Medium Tank was absolutely a clear cut winner. It was king of the hill in terms of the medium and main battle tanks, period. Same thing with the Tank Hunter, right? That now the Tank Hunter wasn't a clear cut answer. I, when I did my testing video, I basically ranked the Liberty uh, Tank Hunter and slash Helicopter and the Vanguard Tank Hunter slash Helicopter as basically 1A and 1B because the results were so neck and neck that it was hard to really say, okay, this is the clear cut better option. Both are fantastic. The Vanguard Fighter Plane compared to the Liberty Fighter Plane. The Vanguard Fighter Plane is better. Now the Liberty Fighter is a good option, but the Vanguard Fighter is better. The Liberty Bomber, 100% better 
than the Vanguard bomber, the Liberty Howitzer. The Vanguard camp doesn't have a howitzer, but under the artillery umbrella, you do have the anti-tank gun, but the anti-tank gun is a very single-focused unit. It is a defensive-focused unit. The Liberty Howitzer, you're going to get a lot more value from. It's great in the open field against other units. It's great in army groups when attacking bases. It's great in your base garrison when you are getting attacked. It does a ton of damage output to enemy units. When it comes to infantry, the Liberty Infantry does extremely well. It's got a smoke feature which smokes enemy units and blinds them and prevents them from doing damage in attacks. The Liberty Infantry has some value that the other two do not because it's got a feature the other two do not. It's got a smoking ability or a smoking feature where it smokes the enemy unit and hinders them in combat. And then you have got the Liberty Light Tank. It is so versatile, it is so mobile, it is so fast. Again, you can you can not only run full army groups of light tanks and you guys can work behind enemy lines or just attack head on enemy army groups. It absolutely decimates, I mean decimates helicopters. You guys can play it just and basically micromanage it by yourself and work behind enemy lines, attack enemy reserve lines. It does a lot and brings a lot of value and, in, and they are a pain in the to deal with, especially when you've got them in the on your back lines sniping your reserves. It's, it's just so tough to deal with light tanks. They, there's so much value there. And then you've got the Vanguard camp. So we said the Martyr's Watch was the worst, and that's not an opinion. That's a fact based on all of the testing that we've done. Camp Liberty, in my personal opinion, is the best well-rounded overall camp in the game. That's not to discredit the Vanguard camp, though. The Vanguard camp could easily be considered, in my opinion, a 1B. Some people might even say it's a better camp than the Liberty camp. I would make a pretty valid case as to why that's not true, but you could at least argue it. You can't really argue it for the Martyrs camp you, that you just can't, at least not right now, unless they really start to buff up some Martyr Watch units. But you could definitely make the case for the Vanguard camp. But if you were going to start with either of the two, you're going to get a lot more versatility and value at least right out of the gate with the Liberty camp. The Vanguard camp is still a great camp, but some of the key units that you guys do want to focus on if you guys are interested in building units from the Vanguard camp. And to be honest, you're going to have to build units from all three camps. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute on why. But some of the key, key units from the Vanguard camp are going to be the medium tank for sure, the tank hunter, for sure, the fighter plane, for sure. Those are the three big, big value units from the Vanguard camp. You can definitely have a anti-tank gun conversation simply because it does have an anti-aircraft feature, which is good in army groups in the open field, but it is still limited in its versatility and value, but it's not a bad unit by any means. Now let's talk about camp buffs because camp buffs are real and camp buffs can help your units a lot, but it is very, very hard unless you are a mega whale that has got just unlimited funds to factor in camp buffs to a super serious degree. Now there are some other content creators out there I know that are kind of fixated on the camp buff thing. And again, camp buffs are real and you obviously want to get as much benefit for your units as you possibly can. You want to get as many buffs geared towards your units as you possibly can. But camp buffs are hard and I'm not saying disregard them, but what I am saying is don't be so fixated on it that you lose value out of other potentially really good units just because you want to buff up you know, one or two of your units just a little bit. I would take the better overall unit than a little bit of camp buff. So let's take a look at the overview of camp buffs and explain that for you guys, because if you're a new player in Warpath, you won't even know what camp buffs are yet. So we're going to explain it in its basic form, and then we're going to talk about why I'm saying don't disregard camp buffs, but kind of disregard camp buffs. All right, so here is the overview of the camp buffs. There are five different camp buff levels, and these are all going to be the same for all three camps. So level one, for example, you guys are going to get a 2% damage and damage resist buff for your troops and base when you have two Camp Liberty troops deployed. Level two, you guys are gonna get a 4% damage and damage resist for your troops and base when you guys have three Camp Liberty troops deployed. And you guys can see as it goes down, once we get to level five, there's gonna be an 18% damage and 18% damage resist for your troops and base when you have six Camp Liberty troops deployed. Now that's huge, right? Like I said, I'm not trying to discredit camp buffs and I'm not saying that you shouldn't try to get the most amount of camp buffs that you possibly can. But unless you're a mega whale, it's gonna be really, really hard to have six or more units from the same camp that are all super developed and super viable, especially when you get to 
modern units. And why do I say it gets really hard to factor in camp buffs when you get to modern units. That's because you have to have prototype pieces to develop your modern units. And I've got videos dedicated to showing you guys how to build 9.2 units and everything. I might make an updated one at some point here, but just for the basic conversation, to develop modern units, so classic units are going to be ranged from the three-star unit all the way up to the 7.2 star unit. Modern units, we'll click on the, we'll just click on the infantry here, for example. Modern units are gonna be from eight star all the way to 9.2 star. At least that's as far as it goes in the game currently. That may change down the road at some point, but currently in the game, the highest modern unit that you can get is a 9.2 star version. But to upgrade the modern unit versions of a unit, you guys are going to have to have prototype pieces. And the only way to get prototype pieces, or I should say the main way to get prototype pieces is going to be by disassembling your units. So you guys can see I've come over into the disassembly plant just to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about. So we are in the advanced dis disassembly section. You guys can see it says disassemble seven through 7.2 star units to earn prototype pieces for their camp. Disassembling a unit will refund all resources you invested. So let's click on the Martyr's Watch medium tank, for example. So if I was to disassemble this, that means that I am basically going to totally destroy this unit. And if I want to build it again, I have to start completely from scratch again. But when I do that, in return, I am going to get four Martyr Watch prototype pieces. If I click on the 7.1 version of the Martyr Watch Tank Hunter, you guys can see I'm going to get 12 prototype pieces. And then I will use this Liberty 7.2 unit as an example. If we click on that and I was to disassemble that, I am going to get 36 Liberty prototype pieces. Now, this is why it is so hard to get many camp buffs, especially when you get to modern units, because you can build all of these units. But if you actually want to develop and, and progress and upgrade your units through the modern star rankings, you guys are going to have to break down other units from that same camp to get prototype pieces. So it's really, really tough to keep all of these units actually built up and then to still be able to develop modern units at the same time. Now, I know if you guys are brand new into the game, that's this is not making a lot of sense because you don't know the full modern unit development process yet. It will make it will it will start to make sense as you guys start to progress through the game. And again, I've got videos that are dedicated to showing you guys how to actually build units all the way up to 9.2 stars. So you guys are free to check that out if you want. I encourage it if you are new, but you guys will find out and it will start to make sense why it is so hard to factor in camp buffs, especially when you start to make the transition to modern units. Now I wanna show you guys my actual unit setup for context so you guys can see exactly what I'm saying. So for my ground force, I have got two Liberty units. I have got two Vanguard units, and then I've got one Martyr Watch unit. These are my five main units that are deployed and that I actually use in combat. So like I was saying, I have a mix of all of them. Now, of course, this isn't my necessarily like most ideal setup. That will change over time as I build more units, but you guys get the idea that it's really tough to build a bunch of units from the same camp and to be able to actually maintain those units. So. It's going to get to a point for you guys where you have to ask yourself, okay, do I want two or three 9.2 star units, for example, or do I want to have like one 9.2 star unit and the rest of them are like six star units just for camp buffs because you can't build, you could build units from other camps because you can get prototype pieces for them, but you're not able to get prototype pieces for the Liberty camp because you're trying to just factor in camp buffs, it gets really hard, right? So the question becomes, do I want one really good unit that's got some camp buffs, or do I want a few really good units with a little bit less on the camp buff? For me, that's an easy answer. I'm taking the better units because the better units are going to get me more overall value than just a extra uptick in camp buffs. Again, I'm not discrediting the camp buffs, but I'm going to get more value from having three 9.2 star units fully maxed out than I am one 9.2 star unit that's got, let's say, I don't know, I'm just throwing a number out there, it's got like eight extra percent damage and damage resist. You know, that's kind of the trade-off you're gonna have to ask yourself is do you want the more camp buffs or do you want the overall better units? And then the same thing with my Air Force. You guys can see I've got a Vanguard fighter plane, I've got a Martyr Watch fighter plane and a Martyr Watch bomber, so I've kind of got got a hodgepodge of mix and match to the best of my ability to get what I want and what I need, but to also make it make sense for prototype pieces. Let me know what you guys think. I'm sure some of you guys have a different uh, opinion or a view on 
some of the things we've discussed in this video. Like I said, it's a clear cut. It's it's really not even up for debate that the Martyr Watch camp is is the worst. I mean, it really is. That's not to say every unit in the Martyr Watch camp is the worst, but overall the camp is the worst. The Liberty camp, in my personal view, is the best overall camp in the game. So if you are a new player in Warpath, I would definitely suggest you start building units in the Liberty camp right out of the gate. Vanguard camp is a very close second for me. Some of you, it might be your first choice and that's okay. But for me, and if I'm going to suggest anything to you guys, especially if you are a new player and looking for some direction, I would tell you to 100% prioritize the Liberty camp. Without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to get a lot of value and it is going to be a camp that's got units that are going to be viable to you in the early game, mid game, and late game. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video. If you guys have made it this far into the video, if you guys have access to Discord and are not already in our community Discord server, the link to that is gonna be in the description of the video. Whether you are a new player and have questions wanna learn, whether you're a veteran player and you just wanna come hang out with more people in the community, doesn't matter, absolutely everybody is welcome. Thanks for hanging out with me in the video today, guys, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.